Practical matters and gossip are their bread and butter? This is ridiculous. I can't even begin to imagine what personality type I am. I'm a doctor by day, YouTuber by night, dog dad by evenings, TV host sometimes. I'm a pretty weird fella. And I'm genuinely excited to find out along with you what my personality type is. I'm also gonna be talking about some of the science when it comes to these personality tests, but let's just jump right into it and take this bad boy. Take the test. You enjoy vibrant social events with lots of people. Um, yeah, I think I like them. Sometimes I get overwhelmed, especially when a lot of people ask to take photos or have medical questions. I love that. But when you're on your 300th selfie, I'm not joking about those numbers because I do give speeches at colleges, high schools, medical schools, and I try and stay and take pictures and answer questions from everyone in the audience. My facial muscles to smile legit hurt. I need like a day of recovery before I can smile again. Your travel plans are more likely to look like a rough list of ideas than a detailed itinerary. Agree, if I even put a rough list together in the first place. You often think about what you should have said in a conversation long after it has taken place. Agree a thousand percent. Literally in my childhood, and probably to this day, I remember going to sleep and replaying all my social interactions and thinking what I could have said better. What would have someone else said in my shoes? What would have been funnier, more interesting? It's like my version of counting sheep. One, two, tres, cuatro. I should have said ha ha instead of ho ho. Your friend is sad about something. Your first instinct is to support them emotionally, not try to solve their problem. I've gotten in trouble with this. As a doctor, I want to help them emotionally, but at the same time, my practical sense wants to solve their problem. And I probably do that too often. People can rarely upset you. Nah, nah, nah. Disagree. People can upset me. And I don't mean comments. I mean like people who I held, hold near and dear to this organ here. I'm not talking about my pectoral muscle. I'm talking about the heart, the cardiac muscle, the myocardium. Mm -hmm. You often rely on other people to be the ones to start a conversation and keep it going. No, um, I tend to speak and I like speaking, but I will never be the first one to jump out and speak. I will let others speak, get a sense for what the room is like, understand who likes what type of humor, what's okay, what's not, establish myself, and then throw out little jabs of jokes, jabs of jokes. You rarely worry if you made a good impression on someone you met. Oh, it depends how important that person is. You rarely worry. I sometimes worry. I think about it. I'm gonna slightly disagree. It would be a challenge for you to spend the whole weekend all by yourself without feeling bored. Ah, agree. <laughs> the whole weekend? Come on, like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? That's tough. Especially because I have bear. It's like cheating. I have a life hack. Dog hack. Dog life hack. You are more of a detail-oriented person than a big picture person. I think I'm a big picture person. You are very affectionate with people you care about. Agree to the highest degree. You have a careful and metho methodical approach to life. Mm, no, no, I'm quite careless. But at the same time, I always follow the rules. It's kind of maniacally, carefully, irresponsible. I've largely stayed out of trouble, and I think that means I'm careful. But methodical, like do I know everything that's, I don't know, but I went to an accelerated medical program. I'm gonna agree to a slight degree. You are still bothered by the mistakes you made a long time ago. No, I disagree. At parties and similar events, you can mostly be found farther away from the action. Um, no, I disagree. I like to be in a place where I can like be in the action, leave the action, be in the action, leave the action. See this? I'm like the ocean, the locomotion. You often find it difficult to relate to people who let their emotions guide them. I'm gonna say, I won't give the full agree, because with my patients, I understand, but definitely, sometimes I just want people to think less with their emotions, even though I understand where that's coming from, because I'm such a proponent of like cognitive behavioral therapy, thinking practically, thinking rationally, getting outside of our emotions, and believe me, I've fallen victim to my emotions at times. When looking for a movie to watch, you can spend ages browsing the catalog. Yes, and it's not because I'm picky, it's because I've watched everything. I've watched way too much content. The amount of bad movies I've watched, <coughs> Town Girls, is crazy. You could 
could stay calm under a lot of pressure. Agree, faux show. Uh, doctor. When in a group of people you do not know, you have no problem jumping right into the conversation. I have some trouble, so I'm not gonna go agree all the way. When you sleep, your dreams tend to be bizarre and fantastical. No, no. I strongly disagree with this one. My tend to be really practical. I remember one of my recurring dreams in high school. This is so sad. I would be asleep and I would have the fear that someone made me try or encouraged me to try smoking and I got addicted to cigarettes and I had to break it to my dad who's very disciplinarian-like. I guess that would be classified as a nightmare. In your opinion, it is sometimes okay to step on others to get ahead in life. Disagree slightly. You are dedicated and focused on your goals, only rarely getting sidetracked. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna agree because becoming a doctor age 24, that takes a lot of focus. When at a social event, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new people, mostly talk to the ones you already know. As I've gotten older, I'm more interested in meeting new people. I'm gonna disagree slightly. You usually lose interest in a discussion when it gets philosophical. No, 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 no. Philosophical discussions are where I thrive. You would never let yourself cry in front of others. Agree. I'm sensitive, but not in front of others. You feel more drawn to places with a bustling and busy atmosphere than more quiet, intimate ones. I'm probably more drawn. I mean, I live in New York for God's sakes. You like discussing different views and theories on what the world could look like in the future. Yeah, agree. When it comes to making life-changing choices, you mostly listen to your heart rather than your head. Disagree quite strongly. You prefer to get your revenge rather than forgive. No, I like to forgive. Sometimes. <laughs> you often make decisions on a whim. I don't make them on a whim, I make them quickly and decisively, but not on a whim, so I still disagree. The time you spend by yourself often ends up being more interesting and satisfying than the time you spend with other people. No, disagree. I like being with other people. I learn more about myself when I'm around other people, but I need that time alone, so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that middle one in. You often put special effort into interpreting the real meaning or the message of a song or movie. Of course, I overanalyze all the time. You rarely think back on the choices you made and wonder what you could have done differently. Disagree, I do that quite often. When in a public place, you usually stick to quieter and less crowded areas. Uh, somewhat agree. You often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. Disagree. I feel like I have a higher EQ than I do IQ. When you know someone thinks highly of you, you also wonder how long it will be until they become disappointed in you. Oh man. I try to make them not be disappointed in me, but I don't think about it. You feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation. Uh, disagree, I wish. That was always my dream. I read so many books on doing that and I still can't do that. I'm better at it and I can force myself to do it, but instinctively, intuitively, inside of me, I don't know, I don't think I'm like that. You often drift away into daydreaming about various ideas and scenarios, sometimes. You look after yourself first and others come in second. Ooh, I disagree slightly. I tend to think of others a lot, but at the end of the day, you have to take care of yourself if you wanna take care of others. Even when you have planned a particular daily routine, you usually just end up doing whatever you feel like at a given moment. Ah, I'm gonna have to say agree. Your mood can change very quickly. Ah, I disagree. You often contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. Nope. I don't actually. You often talk about your own feelings and emotions. Actually, I do that and I think I've learned to do that more over the last 10 years. And I've actually had people judge me for it. I like to bounce ideas off people and have them hear my emotions, but I tell both sides of every situation to try and get an honest take from people. You have got detailed education or career development plans stretching several years into the future. Highly agree. You rarely dwell on your regrets. Yeah, I don't really regret much. You find it easy to empathize with a person who has gone through something you never have. Agree. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy than to organize and consistent efforts. I, it's funny, I agree, but I think most people answering that question for me would completely disagree because they think I am organized and consistent. I like to work like cramming quickly, getting things done, boom, 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 and then like a period of not so productive time. Your emotions control you more than you control them. Strongly disagree. After a long, exhausting week, a fun party is just what you need. No, actually I disagree. Whenever we finished a big test in med school, all my med school friends would be like, party at a blah, 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 blah house. And I'm just like, party? 
I need a nap. You frequently find yourself wondering how technological advancement could change everyday life. Yeah, I think about that. You always consider how your actions might affect other people before doing something. Agree? You rarely feel insecure. Disagree. Feel insecure all the time. Part of the process. Oh, I have my result. But before I give you this result, let me tell you the scientific truth about these personality tests. You can't say personality tests without saying Myers-Briggs type indicator. And it's actually the one that's been most disproven by modern psychology. Humans are complicated we don't just fit into a specific subset of letters. So right now I wanna give you four problems that I have with personality tests in general and why they shouldn't be used for major life decisions like getting a job, finding a partner, or diagnosing oneself. First, we don't have perfect evidence for real world implications. So you've been labeled an introvert. Does that mean you can't be a good leader? There's no evidence proving that. Two, black or white labeling. Guess what? Humans are a spectrum, especially when it comes to personality. And in fact, the majority of you will fall into the average, which is rarely an extreme in either direction. Three, there's been a tremendous lack of reproducibility for a scientific concept to hold up in science as part of the scientific method. I said science three times. It has to be reproducible. That means as one person takes the same test several times, the results should stay consistent. But with these tests, individuals get different results. We find out different results when we put them to the test no reproducibility. And four, especially for the Myers-Briggs type indicator, four categories just isn't enough to define all personality aspects or characteristics. Recent evidence shows that there are at least five, possibly even six aspects. And honestly, I think there's even more than that. There should be no major role for these tests in the medical or psychological sphere. That being said, these tests are fun and I wanna know my results. I bet you do too. Okay, my personality type is ESFJA, E-S-F-J-A. I don't know what any of those mean, but it means console. I don't know what a console is. I am 61% extroverted, 39% introverted. I agree, because I am somewhat introverted. Energy, I am 50% intuitive and 50% observant, okay? I don't know what that means, but I'm 50-50. Nature, this trait determines how we make decisions and cope with emotions. 60% feeling, 40% thinking. Have I been an emotional creature this whole time? Maybe my Scorpio zodiac sign is true. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tactics. This trait reflects our approach to work, planning, and decision making. 60% judging, 40% prospecting. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm judgy? Identity. This trait underpins all others showing how confident we are in our abilities and decisions. I'm 60% assertive and 40% turbulent. Fair. Introduction. People who share the console personality type are, for the lack of a better word, popular, which makes sense given that it is also a very common personality type, making up 12% of the population. In high schools, consoles are cheerleaders and the quarterbacks setting the tone. <laughs> I wish whoever created this test got to see a picture of me in high school. That would just end all of their research right then and there. Discussing scientific theories or debating European politics isn't likely to capture consoles' interest for too long. What? Discussing scientific theories? Not only is it my job, it's my passion. I love it. Consoles are more concerned with fashion and their appearance, their social status, and the standings of other people. No! Practical matters and gossip are their bread and butter? I do not gossip about anything. This is ridiculous. Supportive and outgoing consoles can always be spotted at a party. They're the ones finding time to chat and laugh with everyone. I answered those questions as no. I get nervous at parties. I said at the beginning of this video, it stresses me out. The smiling muscles hurt. Strong practical skills, true. Strong sense of duty, true. Very loyal, true. Okay, this is better. Sensitive and warm, true. Good at connecting with others, true. Console weaknesses, worried about their social status. Inflexible? The bear just throw up. Inflexible? Reluctant to innovate or improvise? My life <laughs> is about innovating, improvising, adapting, pivoting. In medicine, on YouTube, that is all we do. They need to know that their partners will always be by their sides, offering unwavering support, and marriage and family are the ultimate goal. I wanna know the person that's like, ah, Unwavering support, eh. A family, eh. Marriage, eh. Unwavering support is nice for everybody, not just consoles. Career paths. 
this is gonna get interesting. Consoles are all are well organized, enjoying bringing order and structure to the workplaces. This is so inaccurate. Careers as administrators are a natural fit, allowing consoles to organize not just an environment, but the people in it. Ugh. Oh. Few personality types are as practical and caring as consoles, known for their social and administrative skills. I don't think anyone's ever been like, Mike, great administrative skills. Zero people have said that. Yet consoles can be easily tripped up in areas where their kindness and practical approach are more of a liability than an asset. Consoles need to put a conscious effort to develop their weaker traits and additional skills. I don't think that was an accurate description. In fact, I wanna know what all the descriptions exist so I can pick mine. I know that's not how it works, but I think I could pick mine more accurately than this test can. If you wanna see me taking and struggling with a kid's quiz, click here. Or if you wanna see teens explain what a period is, that's right, you heard me, click here. As always, stay happy and healthy. But which one are you clicking?